Good morning, my friends. It's Saturday, August 20th, and I'm here with you at the Rising of the Sun. I'm in my little bedroom because my um, college son is on my sofa in the living room. And I have with me this beautiful painting of Jesus and Mary. Our final day with this beautiful piece. Often when a person dies, I'll pray that they will go into the arms of God. We continue today in the Gospel of John. Jesus continues to tell us about how he is the bread of life, but he expands on it a little bit more. He remembers how the Hebrews in the desert ate the manna. Remember the manna which came down from heaven, this flaky, sweet substance that the Hebrews could eat, and it helped them survive. He said, but that bread only nourished the body, and they died with the end of their lives. The bread that I give you will lead to eternal life. And this bread is my flesh. So really eating is all throughout scripture from the very beginning of the story of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, to the manna in the desert, to the kingdom of heaven where there's a table set that we will share a meal with Jesus himself. And of course, the Last Supper which we believe is eternally present in the Eucharist. So when we celebrate the Eucharist, we believe we are with Jesus in God's time, which transcends linear time. We're with Jesus at the moment of the breaking of the bread at the Last Supper, and with everyone who has participated in the Eucharist for the 2,000 years since and even beyond into the future. It's quite a miraculous concept. This bread that Jesus gives us is nourishment for the soul. It's nourishment for eternal life. It's not a physical nourishment. It's a spiritual one. During the pandemic, there was a man who was in his late 70s who um, wanted to come to church to have the Eucharist, no matter what was happening with the coronavirus. And I asked him, I said, tell me, Tell me why. And he said, because I'd rather die from taking the Eucharist. I know where I was going. If we really understood the magnitude of what it is that we consume in that consecrated bread, I think the lines would be out the door to the church on Sunday morning, way down the block. People would be begging for it. But it's a gentle, graceful, and subtle mystery that is one of the most powerful sacraments in the world. And for those who understand it, we can't live without it. And for those who don't understand it, I hope that one day they will come to do so. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with your body, with your blood, with the living bread that comes down from heaven. Evermore give us this bread so that we may live with you in eternity and walk into your arms. And that when our bodies fade and die, we will come to you fully as your own because we have partaken of you and become one with you. Lord, we ask you to bless the sick today. Bless the dying, the hungry, those who are in pain. Bless those who are lonely, grieving, addicted or mentally ill. And bless the caretakers. Lord, give us peace in this world. Open our eyes and hearts and minds to those that differ from us 
so that we can deepen our conversations, communicate, and find reason. Help us to respect and honor this beautiful earth that you've given us, to find ways to replenish its resources. This we pray in the name of Jesus, your son, who loves us and gave himself for us so that we might partake of the bread of life. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.